So over the last couple of months, you guys have sent in PC parts that either are broken and you'd like me to try and fix them, or you've sent in PC parts that are completely working fine and you just want to support the channel. So big thank you to you guys. And the most curious of the parts that got sent in was a brand new Ryzen 5 1400 with a lot of bent pins. So today we're going to try and fix these broken parts and see if we can get them working. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with that video where we're going to try and fix up, first of all, this Ryzen 5 1400. Now, if you somehow happen to get bent pins on a Ryzen CPU, then you've clearly done something wrong in the process of installing this CPU. In the case of Matt from the UK, he sent in his Ryzen CPU. I didn't ask him how he did this. He just said he had a Ryzen CPU with a lot of bent pins. And when I saw this, it did have a lot of bent pins. I've never seen this many bent pins on a Ryzen CPU in my life before, and I don't know how you do something like this, but we're gonna try and fix this. And the problem with PGA versus LGA, PGA being the AMD CPUs, is that the pins are generally stronger. So you won't get away with a mechanical pencil, or in the case of using a toothpick like I usually do, it doesn't work either. So in this case, I had to actually use a screwdriver and a pair of tweezers to try and fix up all these bent pins. Now the difficult thing about fixing up PGA socketed pins is that because they're stronger and you use a little bit more force, if you bend them back the other way, and especially if they've been bent pretty hard, then you can snap the pin off. And in the case of the Ryzen 5 1400, I was on my kitchen bench trying to fix this and then on my couch for literally hours on end, just bending pins back and forth. And in the process, two of the pins actually snapped off because they were really weak to begin with. So with that, I did manage to finally fit it in the socket. And if you do this, you have to, of course, be very careful. I found actually that the mechanical screwdriver did end up working the best for me, one with a very thin tip, and then you had a lot more control. Of course, if you've got better tools in your Acernal, like a really fine piece of tweezers, then you probably have a better time doing this. And when I installed the CPU, it did actually work in the end. I booted up into the BIOS, I got into the BIOS, but one very odd thing with those two broken pins off was that we were now running in single channel memory mode and I confirmed that it wasn't the motherboard when I installed a different Ryzen CPU that I had around here. So we were now in single channel mode and we couldn't get dual channel mode to work so I pulled out the CPU and then tried to put two broken pins back in from another CPU. So I busted off, off a $1 FM2 old school APU, busted off two pins off that stuck them in the socket and it didn't work still. So this thing about sticking pins in the socket on AM4, it might not work as it didn't work for me and I tried getting these pins in and I actually got them in perfectly, I thought, but it didn't work in the end. So if you do want to put pins back on a Ryzen CPU, then I'd recommend micro soldering. It's something that I can't do personally. I don't have the gear at the moment and my hands are pretty rough. So you need to have what I call surgeon hands in order to perform this mod. So in the end, we did manage to get the Ryzen 5 1400 working, though it wasn't a perfect fix. I may try in the future to get this thing working again. So if you guys have any suggestions, then be sure to drop them in the comments section below. However, before we get on to the next broken parts in the list, I'd like to give a big shout out to today's video sponsor, Video Blocks. With Video Blocks, you guys can log onto the website, download any of their massive array of stock footage, and you can choose from that download it, put it in your videos, and you don't have to worry about copyright claims because it's completely royalty free. So if you use the link videoblocks.com slash techyescity underscore 0917, then you'll get a seven day free trial. The link's in the description below. And with that, I've been using this service for actually a couple of years now. I use some of their footage in countdowns. I've used some of their technology footage and also their intro footage as well. That's been good when you get the templates you can load them into After Effects, edit the colors and text to your liking, and you've now got an intro that's really cheap. You don't have to go out and source a professional company to make you an intro. And also with that, you can save a lot of time. So great for YouTube content creators, for example, or people who have a company and they make content for other companies and they are on a budget to do some of their work. There's also a heap of different categories to choose from and a free seven day trial if you click the link in the description below, so nothing to lose. And with that, let's get back to fixing those broken PC parts. 
So the next part we've got up here is one that I was really excited about when I went used PC parts hunting in Japan. I picked this up for $10. This is a Z68 Maximus Gene from a Zeus. Very expensive motherboard when it was released new. Still expensive if you've got one that works perfectly fine to this date. And when I saw it in the stores, everything physically checked out except for two bent pins. And I thought I'd take the gamble on this and buy it since two bent pins is pretty easy to fix on LGA. And now this time around, I got my trusty toothpick, which is the method that I do prefer, and then bent the two pens back in literally like five seconds. And the really good news was, was that after I did this, it was working absolutely fine. Now, Daniel from Adelaide on Facebook, he sent me over a G620 so I could update the BIOS if need be. So thank you for sending that CPU in. It did work fine. And also with that, the BIOS on this motherboard was actually the latest revision to begin with. So I didn't have to update the BIOS. I then proceeded to test out a 2500K, which James from Western Australia sent over. So big thank you as well for that. And that worked perfectly fine. Then I decided to test the two CPUs that I bought in Japan, the 3770K, which I got for $100, and also the i3-3240, which I got for around $25, I believe, and both these CPUs worked absolutely fine as well. Now, the next sample we've got up here was Tim from New Zealand. Now, Tim in the past has sent me over a Z87X with a 4690K, and unfortunately, the motherboard didn't work in that case, but the i5 did, so we managed to score an i5. It did work out in the end, so real big thank you to Tim. This time around, he sent in a Z970 Pro 3 from ASRock and also an FX8350. And he says it just doesn't work. He wants me to test it out. And upon checking out the board physically, it did check out fine. There was nothing that looked wrong. It physically checked out okay. There was no bad smells coming from it. And upon pulling off the CPU from the socket, I noticed that there was a little bit of thermal paste in the socket itself. And now with this, especially on PGA sockets, it's very not only dangerous, but it can stop a CPU or motherboard combo from working. In this case, there's two different types of thermal paste that generally can cause problems. There's actually three different types. The third, which I recommend now a lot of the time, which is like MX4, it's non-conductive and non-capacitive. However, a lot of thermal pastes out there are either capacitive, conductive, or both. Now, if you use a capacitive thermal paste like Arctic Silver, for example, you do run the risk of parts not working. However, you usually don't have the risk of damaging parts with a capacitive thermal paste. You'll just see that the product just simply doesn't work because the bridging power isn't strong enough to damage the perspective parts. However, if you use a conductive thermal paste, that's where you can run into some really big problems. Things like liquid metal, for example, if that bridges two different SMDs together, you can have some real big problems, not only damaging the part that touches that, but also parts that are connected to that too. So be very careful with conductive thermal paste. However, this time around, I believe capacitive thermal paste was used because after I cleaned up the socket with brake cleaner and also the CPU itself, the product was then working fine. This 970 Pro 3 motherboard and the FX8350 booted up absolutely fine. So next up we had Vasily from Italy and big thank you for this. He sent over a Z97X gaming G1 motherboard and also a 4790K. So that's a lot of money to send us over, man. Thank you a lot for that. And now he says this motherboard and CPU work perfectly fine. And also after I tested it out, it did indeed work perfectly fine. Now why I do test these parts out and I do recommend testing out any used parts is because if you don't and you then you do a used build with them, the amount of time you're going to waste pulling all those parts out again, the frustrations you could have is well worth that time just quickly testing it out before you put it in the build. So I always recommend testing out used parts before you use them in builds. However, Vasily did have one request that I used with his motherboard and that was to test it out in Battlefield 1 because when he was using this motherboard and CPU, he was having problems with low frame rates with a GTX 1080 Ti. So what I'm gonna do in a future, I'm gonna put this in a build and then I'm gonna test it with Battlefield 1 with a 1080 Ti. I'm gonna overclock the memory, overclock that CPU and see if it does indeed have stuttering problems or it just can't simply handle a 1080 Ti, which I think a 4790K overclocked to around 4.8 gigahertz should handle a 1080 Ti absolutely fine. And for the final part to check out here today, we had Jeffrey from the US. He sent over a GTX 970 from EVGA. This is the ACX 2.0. Big thank you. He said this product works perfectly fine. He's just upgraded his graphics card now to a 10 series card. 
so he doesn't need the 970 anymore. And when looking at this thing, it looked like it was literally brand new. So big thanks, Jeffrey. I decided to quickly test it out and lo and behold, it worked perfectly fine. So I don't know, man, these parts that are getting sent in, a lot of them are very expensive. I may do a giveaway PC, for instance, with the Z97X G1 and also this GTX 970. It's a lot to ask from you guys. I really appreciate this support a lot, guys. It really does help the channel. However, in ways, I feel like it's a little bit too much. Uh, if you guys want to jump on Patreon, for example, just for a dollar a month, you can support the channel that way. I mean, sending over parts that are worth like two, three hundred dollars is a big thank you, but I probably will use them for more charitable options because I just feel a bit too greedy accepting donations that big. Anyway, that's about it for today, guys. Big thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comments section below what was your favorite fixed part of today. I enjoyed fixing up all these parts. I thought that Z68 motherboard was actually my favorite. It was just a quick two bend backs of the pins and it worked perfectly fine after that. The Ryzen 5 1400, that's still a little bit of work in progress, but at least it does work. Maybe it'll be interesting to test this out with single channel memory on two channels that was actually recognized. So this is a really cool thing, a really unique thing. Maybe I can turn it into a really interesting video with double single channel memory versus dual channel memory, who knows? But anyway guys, before I get on out of here, big thank you to Video Blocks for sponsoring out this video. I'll put the link in the description below. You can get a seven day free trial. Awesome footage, not just for using for B-roll, but also for using for things like countdowns. And you can even download templates and make your own intros for your own YouTube channel or whatever content you wanna do. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.